Fun sponge. Blinding light, almost surgical, fills the room. A man dressed in a grey, ill-fitting blazer stands in the spotlight, balding and small. He's reading from cue cards and trying his best. Hey. Hey, you. Have you spilled your morning cup of joe on the new cream rug? Buster marked his territory under the family couch again? Well, have I got a solution for you. Introducing the Sutzweiser 4000, a new leap forwards in the evolution of the sponge, developed with NASA technology and real giant squid DNA, the Sutzweiser 4000 can soak, scour, scrub, and suck all at the same time. You suck. For, for the uh, uh, low, low price. Um, you suck. You suck. You suck. You suck. You suck. You five suck. easy payments of no i i don't suck i don't suck low wine builds to an ear-splitting screech as the cries of you suck continue blackout in darkness we hear only one only one only one lights up on a beige double bed in a beige hotel room. The only thing not uniformly bland are a pair of floor to ceiling windows and set of thick curtains pulled open to reveal a view of an enormous shopping outlet car park and casino. There is a mini fridge, a couple of anemic lamps and an enormous suitcase with Sudsweiser stock printed on it. Cecil is sat on the bed using the hotel telephone. I only sold one sponge, okay? Are you, are you laughing, Barbara? That's so, that's why I'm calling. I, I don't think I'll be able to cover alimony this month. Yeah, not so funny now, is it? Well, I'm, I'm sorry. You, you and Chuck will have to reschedule your, your trip to Cape Cod. Really, my heart bleeds. No, th no, there's no need to get Chuck's brother involved. Yes, I know. I know he's a world-class divorce lawyer because he represented you at our divorce hearing. Right, sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to shout. It, it's, it's just, this was my life's work and you only saw one. I mean, it's, it's humiliating. It's, yeah, yes, I know you've heard it all before. Yes, I know you don't care. Look, I'll, I'll get you the money, I, I promise. But by tomorrow? Now, Barbara, that, that's really a bit. The line goes down. Cecil sighs, gets up, and goes into the bathroom, turns on the taps. Just one minute. Just a second, sorry. I said just a... Cecil exits the bathroom wearing a hotel ro robe and slippers. Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. What, what are you trying to do? Break it down? Jeez. Cecil opens the door. A woman in stilettos, ripped jeans and a leather jacket bursts in with a food trolley. Room service. Room service? I didn't order room service. Sure you did. I can't afford room service. It's on the house. Well, that's nice, but I'm just not hungry, sorry. Well, why don't we just slow things down a little? Let you work up an appetite. Can I shut these? Wow, that is dark. They're blackout blinds and I prefer them open, thank you very much. I'd really prefer them closed. Oh no. I know what's going on here. You do? Did Gary put you up to this? Or the boys from mopping around? This, this is so typical. Kick a man when he's down, why don't you? What's mopping around? I thought all this cleaning circuit tomfoolery had been banned years ago. Where are the cameras? Where's the guy filming? There's no guy. Hey! 
Cecil moves to the curtains and yanks them open. I'm not having my good reputation soiled by some hooker. What did you just say? Escort, strippogram, I, I don't know the terminology. I am not a hooker. Well, you're definitely not room service. Uh, do you see this food trolley? That's just part of your act. And the tray? Piled high with sex drugs, no doubt. Sex drugs. Have you ever done drugs? Or had sex? Yes. Yes, I have. Plenty of times. I was actually a real ladies' man back in college, and, and why am I telling you all this? You need to leave, now. Cecil grabs the trolley and starts pushing it out of the room. Lillianne runs around to the other side of the trolley, thrusting it back into the room. No, you don't understand. I, I can't go out there. Well, you can't stay here. Please, I just need five minutes. I don't think so. Take your trolley and your sex drugs and tell Gary and the rest of those smug pricks down at Mopping Around or whoever put you up to this, then they can shove it up their prissy, bleached assholes. Cecil shoves with all his might. Lillianne shoves back with all of hers. The trolley crashes into the suitcase. The tray on top flies off. $100 bills explode out and cascade down. Look what you... Oh, my God. I can't explain. Holy crap, holy crap. What What are these, what are you, is this? You, you see that casino across the street? Uh-huh. Well, I was just there. I count cards with my husband, Bert. Bert the Dirt, you may have heard of him. He's part of the local motorcycle gang, the Dirty Boys. They've got a bit of reputation in Memphis. Anyway, tonight I won big. Real big. Two hundred grand kind of big. And under normal circumstances, we'd split it 50-50 right down the middle. But when I got that flush, I saw my whole life laid out there on the table and suddenly it hit me. I don't want to just travel from cheap motel to cheap motel, risking my ass for an abusive, unhygienic meat pile of a husband. I want something else, something better. So I cashed in the chips while he was busy flirting with a cocktail waitress and got my ass out of there. So you see why I need to stay here for a while. I'm gonna pass out. Oh gosh, here, lie down. She helped Cecil onto the bed, takes off his slippers. Water, please. Sure thing. She opens the mini fridge and gets out two small bottles of vodka, cracks open the top for Cecil, who drains it in one. So, yeah, that's me. Cecil right. goes with the phone. Cecil goes with the phone. What are you doing? I, I'd like to report an emergency. Oh, no, you don't. Lillian yanks the phone cord out of the wall. I'm sorry, I just cannot allow that. Help! Somebody help me! Lillian straddles Cecil, covering his mouth with one hand and restraining him with the other. Hey, less of that yapping! Cecil wriggles free. I'll yap as much as I want. All I need is to lie low till the heat dies down. No, I refuse. I have had the worst day of my life. Blew the last of my cash in this hotel room and all I want to do is have a relaxing bath, a nice strong poo and fall asleep watching The Bachelor. Is that too much to ask? You can do all those things. I'm not with you here. Fine. If you let me stay for just five minutes, I'll give you ten grand. Twenty. Ten. Fifteen. Five. Eight. Done. Deal. Fine. But I'm not happy about this. I can live with that. Lillian kicks off her shoes. They sit on the bed together. Silence. Rough day, huh? We don't have to talk. Okay. Lillianne starts clearing up the money. She sees the print on the suitcase. What's Sudweiser 4,000? Oh, that, that's nothing. Well, whatever it is, it's got a real cool name. Hey, are you all right? 
yeah, I'm, I'm fine. That's just the nicest thing anyone said to me in a long time. Oh, my sweet little puppy dog, come here. She cradles him and wipes his tears. It's something important to you, I guess. It's my life's work. That's why I'm here. For the scrubbies. The scrubbies? They're basically the Oscars and the Grammys and NASCAR all rolled into one. Celebrating the best kitchen cleaning innovations of the last year. But it was a disaster. Oh, I bet it wasn't a total wash. I, I sold one sponge. One! Well... It looks spectacular to me. And therein lies the problem. It's too good. It's so absorbent that it literally drains all the moisture from the user. It sucked one poor kid's fingerprints right off his hands. Oh, wow. I made a monster. Now how could a guy who sells cleaning supplies for a living end up with such a mess for a life? Oh, my sweet... Oh. Cecil. And you are? Lillian. Nice to meet you. Likewise. But sweet Cecil, you're no mess. In fact, I say you clean up pretty good. Really? Sure. You're pristine. Utterly sterile. Makes a nice change from the men I usually... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> enough about me. What about, what about you? What about me? Your new life. The one you saw stretched out in front of you on and, and and that poker table. Oh, that. Who knows? <laughs> the only thing I've been good at is playing cards and wrestling gators. Right. Well, there is one thing. I guess you could call it a dream. What's that? I... I've always wanted to open a chain of luxury nail salons for dogs. Oh, that's big bucks. Yeah, the money's good. And there are just so many dogs trotting around with the little fingernails trailing in the dirt. All nasty and unclipped, unloved. I thought the thought of that just makes me want to cry. Oh, it's heartbreaking. Any dogs in particular? Well, I wouldn't discriminate, but I really like the little ones. Well, I don't like chihuahuas. Yes, I love tiny dogs. Me too. <gasps> right? They're so delicate and sweet and nervous. I love it when they get dust up their little nose and they do that dog sneeze thing. <laughs> yes, just like that. <laughs> Sorry, I, I sneeze when I'm nervous. Of course you do. And I, I suppose the thing about uh, tiny dogs is that they actually create a disproportionate amount of mess. Oh, they're filthy. So you, you, you'd need someone who, who really knows how to deal with dirt. Couldn't do it without them. They're to clean up all the hair and the urine and the... And the, and the, the, the poop. The poop. <laughs> <laughs> They've locked eyes on the inches away from each other when oh god that's him oh gosh oh geez you better hide where in the case with those flesh eating sponges oh god i, I don't know do, do something I'll, I'll try and buy us some time special switches off the lights draws the curtains the room is plunged into darkness the sounds of zipping and unzipping things rustling footsteps Cecil glugging the last of the vodka. Banging continues. Just one second. As Cecil reaches the door, it flies off its hinges. A hulking figure, all motorbike leathers and bad tattoos, carrying a huge canvas sack bursts in. He grabs Cecil by the face. Where the fuck is my lily pad? <laughs> lily Ann! <clears throat> Where is she? <laughs> Bert lets Cecil drop to the ground. He gasps for breath. All right, you scrawny little pube. Where is my fiance? I, I don't know anything about a fiance. It's, it's just me in here. Bert eyes the room. He slowly picks up a solitary stiletto lying on the floor. There are two things Bert the Dirt simply cannot abide. 
whiny little man bars and deceit. Now you have already got one box ticked. You do not want me to tick the other. All right. You wanna know why they call me Bud the Dirt? Um. When I was just a little boy, my parents were real poor. Dirt poor. Oh, right, I, I see. And I used to get picked on for having all crusty food in my lunchbox and dirty secondhand clothes. Yeah, I, I think I see why they... Why they but I had a special yeah. skill that made me real popular with the older kids. I could eat dirt, tons of it. Oh. Dry dirt, sandy, dark, soaking wet dirt. Isn't that mud? I could eat it all. And so I carry this to remind me of where I came from. Bert slings a huge canvas sack down from his shoulder. Some dirt trickles out. He grabs Cecil and forces his mouth open. So you better start talking before I plant a garden in ya. Bert sees the suitcase. What's that? That, that's, that's nothing. Oh, it is, is it? Well, I suppose if it's nothing, you won't mind me putting a few holes in it. Bert pulls out a gun and aims it at the case. No, please. Oh, so you do mind? Yes. Un unzip it for me. Slow. I, I, I... Bert turns the gun on Cecil. Or I'll put you in the dirt. I... Fine. Cecil unzips the case slowly. Bert looks down into it. What? Lillian bursts from behind the curtain, leaping onto Bert's back and thrusting his face down into the exposed sponges. Oh, just stand there gawking. Give me a hand. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, ma'am. Cecil grabs hold of Bert, who is thrashing like a gator, and together they force him further and further into the suitcase. The sound of chomping and grinding fills the air. Blood and hair and chunks of flesh spray across the room. Bert screams and is still. Ah! The lights rise back to the shining clinical whiteness of the shopping channel that opened the show. Lillianne continues to slowly feed Bert's lifeless corpse into the suitcase, the sponges digesting his body. Cecil wades through the blood and destruction, pulling on a pair of thick gardening gloves and picking up one of the sponges. He turns to look directly into the camera, the audience. So you see, uh, no mess is too big or too small for the Sudsweiser 4000. When it comes to sponges, this little miracle is the only one you'll ever need. Blackout. The end. <laughs>